I'm getting a lot of messages, uh, particularly in my DMs and even in my public comments about, hey, Rukshan, which side of the conflict do you fall on? Do you support these people? Are you a Zionist? Are you this? Are you that? And it really kind of demonstrates to me just the complexities that many Australians would be facing uh, who are a neutral party in this in many ways uh, when looking at this conflict and deciding you know, what, what side they're on or deciding you know, who they support and all these kind of things. And do they even have to do that? Now, my, my opinion, and this is my baseline opinion for all of this, as Australians, uh, we have a different set of principles, different set of values and a different moral code. And sometimes it's that conflict with the multicultural communities, which are, you know, also called Australia home. Uh, that is one of the challenges of living in a multicultural nation such as Australia. And you've seen that play out all throughout the West, where this conflict is, although it's happening in the Middle East, it's also happening on the streets of our countries. We're seeing, you know, um, scenes in Australia, in the UK, in the United States, these protests, uh, sometimes people chanting anti-Semitic uh, things, sometimes people chanting anti-Islamic things. There's, there's a mix of everything happening on our streets here in the West. And that is because we live in a multicultural society. Our friends, our friends, if you're in Australia, are made from and come from all parts of the world and all sorts of ethnicities, all types of religions. And that is something that we uh, value and, and you know, really uh, praise uh, for having this I guess, diversity and this multiculturalism as being a strength. But sometimes in these moments, it is tested. And it is when it's tested, it's really important to, um, you know, gather around what makes us Australian and what makes us unique. And my baseline opinions, my baseline views and all of this stem from the fact that I am first and foremost an Australian. And I look at the world through that lens. Uh, that is how I grew up. Uh, that is the, the the benefits of the life that I live today is because I'm an Australian and that is the benefits of the peace that I enjoy today because I am an Australian in this country. I cannot betray those values because of a conflict happening somewhere else. I have to always look at it through that lens. If I were to betray those values, then it's almost pointless um, me saying that I am I'm, I'm an Australian and that, that this is my identity, that this is who I am. Right, and and I know everyone. Not everyone that lives in this country that comes from different parts of the world gives up their identities or gives up their you know their heritage or their nation and things like this. I, I get that. I understand that. I'm not, I'm not telling people that they have to do that, but I'm saying there is a large percentage of Australians who are very fundamentally, just as you are fundamentally uh, tied to the, your nation of birth or your nation of your parents' birth. There are many of us in this country who are first and foremost. Australian. So everything I see and everything I do is through that lens. Now, as far as these conflicts go, uh, something that I learned very young going to school in the southeastern suburbs of Victoria, uh, in a small town called Dandenong that I often bring up, was that just so many people from all around the world there, ref people who are refugees, people who are fleeing war zones, uh, particularly during the 90s and the, the 2000s, a lot of people from the former Yugoslav um, you know, states or countries that, that were there and a lot of the tensions that were happening there, we're all going to school together and I'm having friends with people from all those different parts of the world and they're all telling me that the other person is wrong. They're all telling me that the other side is the aggressor. They're all telling me the other side is committing genocide. They're all telling me the other side is uh, defending itself. They're, t they're telling me that we have to protect our people. And I'm hearing these different views from all types of different groups and these are all my friends. So how do, you, how do you deal with that, right? And from that time onwards, um, I learned very quickly that, you know, at the end of the day, at the core of it, all people are suffering, all people are in conflict, and all people um, are, have a legitimate uh, claim uh, to stop their suffering and to protect the interest of their people. Th that, that is almost universal. But of course, we have to be mature. We have to be adults about this. And the world is not as black and white as good versus evil. There are also many types of different nuances that goes into these debates. And, you know, we have to kind of uh, reconcile with that and understand what, what that all means as well. And for me, I have personal experience with that is because, in, you know, in my country of birth, uh, Sri Lanka, 30-year civil war, uh, the issues from that are still ongoing. Of course, the war did uh, dramatically end uh, almost a decade, a decade or so ago, but it went for about 25 years, the, the hardest part of that conflict, and you're looking at you know, maybe 300,000 people dead, ethnic conflict, uh, multiple people on two sides fighting each other. 
And but I'm growing up in here in Australia with friends who are from the other ethnicity, right? I'm uh, almost sheltered from that in, in one aspect. But through that, I learned that these people are just like me. We share the same values. Now, the one side of the government in that country would tell us that these people are terrorists and they are, you know, they they want to they want to kill you. The other side who are you know supposedly the terrorists will say well the government are the terrorists and they want to wipe us out they want to genocide us it's ethnic cleansing um and you know my friends from that part of the region uh from that part of sri lanka who from that ethnicity um were steadfastly in the belief that the people that you know people of my ethnicity the Sinhalese, would say are terrorists are their freedom fighters and you know over time i learned to un- understand why these things were being said and being viewed through these different lenses. And what I what I'm what I'm saying with this story is when I would tell this story to other people about the conflict in Sri Lanka, they would always say to me, Well, you know, I hope they they find a way to find peace. I hope they find a way to stop fighting. Oh, okay. Um, you know, that's really bad. Oh yeah, these people are terrorists. Oh yeah, the government is um the aggressor. So there's no universal position on, on a conflict, um, even if you're telling people about it, right? But people who are in the conflict zone, people who are from that part of the world might have a certain view that they take. They might have a certain side that they take, which has nothing to do with anything uh, that is about uh, our basic understandings of uh, these conflicts, right? It's just because they are they are from that region. They are loyal. They are patriotic. Uh, there's a historical reason for it. Their, their family might have gone to the war. Someone in their family might have died in that war. So those reasons cannot be understood by others. Um, and I found that out during the conflict in Sri Lanka. And uh, that has uh, stayed with me till this time. Because uh, you know when you tell people about your conflict, they who are not a part of it, they look at it differently. They view it differently. And it is the same in this instance. Uh, when people are telling me about this conflict in the Middle East, even if they're my friends, I view it differently. I, I view it with a different type of lens, like I keep mentioning. I view it as an Australian. So when we look at this issue, we don't have to come from this as uh, people who are interested in a blood feud, this bloodlust, this historical injustice that some people say has occurred. Because we're looking at all types of different uh, contexts around this. We're looking at all types of different history around this. And there's no obligation on anyone in this country to accept any particular version of this, uh, unless they want to, of course. And even if if they did that, that does not mean that in this country we should be a people that uh, celebrate death against civilians, against innocent people. We should not be celebrating. Uh, we should not be glorifying these uh, wars. Uh, these are not the things which are common uh, to the way that we live in this country. We have to kind of reconcile all these different layers uh, of complexity to this issue. But first and foremost, we are able to, as people, as people to condemn atrocity. Uh, because if you cannot condemn one side, uh, you are unable to condemn the other. But And if you are able to say that one side is justified in their acts of atrocity because the other side did it, then that just creates a cycle. So, And we are not a part of that cycle in Australia when it comes to this conflict. And I think it's very important that that message is um, passed on to the communities that are here because particularly people who are coming to this country, escaping these conflicts, escaping these war zones, to not bring these things to this country as well, right? To not, uh, to not fight these battles on the streets of the West, on the streets of Australia, Right. If you you can take your flags, you can go out there, you can protest, you can call for peace, you can do all of that with your flag. And some people might even disagree with that, but I I don't see a problem with it. I think, you know, if you want to express solidarity with your people overseas, uh, living in a Western democracy, we should be able to do that. That is all fine. But if you want to take your flags out there and express uh, or glorify war or express uh, celebration at the slaughter of people uh, because of some conflict overseas, uh, despite the history of it. I'm not, I'm not commenting on the history of it and how, you know, how serious all of this is from your perspective. I'm saying despite all of that, if you want to go out on the streets here 
and and glorify those things and celebrate those things. I don't think it's called for. If you want to do that, I think you have to understand that fundamentally coming to a country like Australia, living and growing up in a country like Australia, you are blessed because you don't have those problems. You are able to coexist with all types of different people from all around the world. And if anything, what I learned myself during the conflicts that happened in my country in Sri Lanka is I'm coexisting with all these people who I'm told historically I should hate. And I'm finding out every day <laughs> that we are the same people. Uh, we have the same interests, we have the same desires, we have the same goals, and we have the same uh, respect and love for our families and the respect and love for peace. And we are able to coexist in Australia. Uh, we are able to have all types of different connections amongst ourselves in Australia. And I think the first and foremost responsibility that we have then as Australians and having have lived that life and having seen that difference that can happen where people can coexist is to want that also for our people back home in whichever country it is where they're having these conflicts to actually tell them that there is a better way there is a way that people can coexist there is a way for peace and i know that sounds airy fairy and maybe not possible when you know some of the atrocities that we're seeing but that is a standard that we have to first and foremost um, stick stick by as australians i believe if you're living in this country if you're living in this country and and your whole slant is that we have to be people who glorify war that people who in, murder innocent people, rape innocent women, um, you know, uh, kill grandmothers, kill babies. If we, if you want, if you're saying that that is the standard that we should be as Australians, you know, I think you, you are completely missing the point and missing the extraordinary benefit you are having in living in this country in peace, and you are denying other people of that same type of privilege and right by you yourself having enjoyed that, and then pretending like it doesn't exist we know it exists so we should be fighting for that so as always um you know i am going to be on the side of the people on all sides of this conflict and i know that there has been some um comments raised about my friendships with uh, a certain individual avi i'll say his name and look we're friends we're work friends uh, he happens to be um jewish he happens to be israeli uh, he happens to be a reporter, he happens to be a journalist, and he is doing his work and he's doing his job. Um, now, you might disagree with what he's saying and you might look at him through a lens of bias because of his past history, because of the fact that he may he, he served in, in the Israeli Defense Forces at one stage. You are all entitled to do that. Um, but I, I don't think that entitlement runs to the point of saying that, you know, Rukshan, you cannot uh, talk to these people. Rukshan, you are also like these people. Rukshan, you have to choose this friend and get rid of this friend it's crazy like that's not the country that we live in it's like someone telling me uh post 9-11 and for instance rukshan you have to stop hanging out with all your muslim friends i mean that's just completely um weird and i, I don't think that's what australia is and that's not the kind of ethnic uh, conflict and crap that we should be seeing in this country uh, it's one thing to say rukshan you should you should educate your friends. You should hold them accountable. You should that. That's all fine. But this kind of blatant, uh, you know, th don't hang out with this person or don't hang out with that person. I think it's it's crossing many boundaries and many lines. And that is not the type of Australian that I am. And that is not the type of country that I want to live in. And that is not the type type of views that I necessarily respect. Uh, this is a ongoing conflict that's going to uh, stretch on, I, I believe, for a long time. Um, we're going to see more atrocity. We're going to see more uh, crimes, war crimes, uh, on all sides. Um, unfortunately, I've seen that firsthand when it comes to civil war in my country. Um, sometimes it, may, it could have been avoided. Sometimes it may be intentional. Uh, these are issues where, where observers are going to be have to looking at this very closely. Now, we can, of course, always petition for peace. We can always um, want all of this to stop. Um, but, you know, look, talking about this seriously, when you're looking at the geopolitical consequences of this and the involvement of the West on one side and uh, majorly the Arab world on the other side uh, in support of the Palestinian people, uh, you are seeing this, uh, uh, this thing becoming very complicated, right? Uh, when I saw, for instance, President Obama, um, a lot of people who... Um, have uh, had a history of being involved in conflict and war and bombing all types of parts of the world 
come very strongly out in support of Israel, uh, you know, to wipe out Hamas, um, I saw then that this is going to be a, a, a long, long-term conflict in the sense of this current operation is going to be intense. And I think a lot of people are going to be very dismayed at what they're going to be seeing. And unfortunately, uh, for many of us, um, you know, we are just on the sidelines. We are helpless in our ability to stop this. But if Palestinian Australians uh, want to be out there advocating for their people and advocating for their cause, uh, that should not be interrupted in this country. And likewise, if the Israeli community, the Jewish people, want to be out there advocating for their people and their side, that should not be stopped whatsoever. Uh, all sides in this conflict have a right to raise awareness of the suffering of their people. But again, I just want to reiterate that line is crossed in this country, in Australia, when that turns into calls for violence against communities here, that when that turns into acts of aggressions against communities here, when that turns into glorifying terrorism uh, and acts of terrorism, acts of violence against civilian populations, uh, that is not welcomed in this country. And no matter what type of justification you might have in your mind for this, no matter what you may believe um, and no matter who aligns with you ideologically that may hate the West, that believes this, uh, as far as we go in terms of our principles, the laws of this country, and the way that we, you know, our moral and ethical codes here, when it comes to these issues, uh, it's not acceptable. And for me, that is, again, the lens that I'm looking at this whole conflict with. So I understand that not everyone's going to agree with my views sometimes, and that might be on all sides of this. And that's fine, because at the end of the day, I have to be true to myself. I have to be Australian and I cannot betray my principles and values because I have to pick sides between um, an ethnic conflict uh, somewhere else that Australia is not linked to besides the fact that we live in a multicultural country and nation that allows people to express all types of ideas but always in respect and in peace. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any uh, comments for me. I know lots of people send me lots of different videos and I haven't really shared too much of this graphic content around this. I've been very uh, neutral in my condemnation of what is going on, but uh, there, there, there will come a time when we really have to um, talk about the uh, atrocities of all this that's happening. And you know, I, I, I don't know if that's welcome. I, I'm, I'm don't, I don't really understand, you know, how people take take these type of things. And I'm just kind of learning about that. Really, this is my first time since covering a lot of the stuff that happened in our, you know, our state here in Victoria in lockdowns covering these geopolitical issues where people of different backgrounds that are my friends uh, uh, disagree with each other and disagree with me sometimes as well. So it's a complex issue, but of course, again, I have to be true to myself and I have to also always share my my views and my perspectives and be honest with you guys. If you're enjoying my work, everyone, you can follow along on X, on YouTube, on Rumble, on Odyssey, Facebook and Instagram at The Real Rukshan. See you guys next time.